Good day, hi, and welcome. Okay, so amplifiers. Uh, since I've kind of re uh, redoing my rig here, and what you're looking at is a beautiful seven string Mark Holcomb series guitar here. Love this guitar so much. It is so awesome. This bass is a lot of fun too for Ibanez Geo five string bass. It's a uh, pretty fun too, and uh, it really the five string is really working for my. Um, recording it makes a lot more sense to have the five string and in fact I, I, i'm starting to think that it maybe i should spend a little bit extra money and got the six string variant <laughs> so i think my next you know like like to, to sit there and noodle away it doesn't make sense but when you're in the mix it seems like uh it really gives you a lot of sonic opportunities but speaking of sonic opportunities this video is more about amps now when you look for an amplifier, what do you see on the market right now? You see a whole bunch of amps that, you know, cater to the classic 60s and 70s sound, right? It seems like all the Marshall amps, or the most of the Marshall amps are doing that. Uh, the Mesa Boogie Duh stuff obviously goes to the high gain. RevTech goes to the high gain. Um, you know, Fender still, you know, does the classic stuff. Uh, and then you got the EVHs, which is a modern amp and stuff like that. But you're finding that there's fewer like metal head high gain amps. There's not really a lot of them out there in comparison to the, you know, here's another 1960s sound, right? And there's a reason for that. Now, for me, the last time I played in a band was in 1995. I know that's a long time ago. I've been on stage many times since then, but like in an actual dedicated band, it was 1995. And I found myself, which, the, you know, this cabinet was there in many gigs in 1995, from 91 to 95, that that, that, that uh, Mesa Boogie cabinet has seen a lot of equipment uh, hooked up to it, that's for sure. And I thought I was still, like, looking for a modern sound and stuff like that and, and how people are doing things now. I thought I was, uh, you know, like looking for basically a 1995 style rig, right? Because what happens is when you buy equipment and you have it forever and a day, such as like, you know, the mess of boogie here and that crate. Well, I've had that since 2003 or 2004. Uh, the Hot Rod Deluxe, I think I bought in 2005. And I've been basically playing through the Hot Rod Deluxe pretty much predominantly for the last past, you know, since 2005. So almost 20 years at that you know like 18 years i've been playing through that amp and just playing straight through the amp no fuss no muss whatever and once in a while play around with this thing right but now i want modern sounds and i want to get into something new and the problem i'm running into is that i can't find an amp that does modern but then it's like modern players aren't using amps this is something that i've discovered a little bit different where back in the 90s uh, let me do it for time here uh, oh yeah, it's still still doing it. Back in the nineties, um, like I was using rack effects, and that was fine. There was no problem with rack effects, but it was kind of like uh, you had uh, your amp head of whatever type. Then that was your main power, right? And you would run a rack effect, which would be basically one of these, and then you would hook a pedal board to the rack effect, and you'd have You'd need like a power, like two power, power uh, surgers like that, power bar surgers like that. And you would also need like two plugins, three plugins. And it was a real pain in the ass. That's why I prefer to play straight through the app, just because it's just the hooking it up. You know, it takes you half an hour to hook everything up, right? Now you get it all in one pedal. Okay. So this pedal to a power amp, to a speaker, that's all you need. And maybe if you're lucky, you can go line out or, uh, to a PA or they put a mic and a line out to your PA, whatever. And I was able to do that with my old Randall head. And I'm going to do it for time. Uh, yeah, I'm still good. Uh, and the thing is, is that worked for some pretty awesome sounds. But again, it, it was more complicated than it needed to be. So I thought there's got to be a better way. So I started looking at different players and some of the sounds of the players that uh, usually if you want to, you know, if you're going after a certain sound, uh, just look at the players you like and see what they're playing. And then that's when you discover some really crazy technology. It's it's amazing how far we've come. Uh, so now what most people are doing is they're going ampless. Uh, how can they do that, you say? Well, basically what they have is like a power app that goes either to the house PA or whatever. And they have uh, basically some sort of effects 
uh, processor that basically does the uh, speaker modeling, the amp modeling, pretty much everything. It's all digital. So I, I discovered it with Mark Holcomb himself. He, what he's playing through is a Power Stage 700 Seymour Duncan power amp. And he basically runs that into the Axe 3 thing. And the, he, there's no pedals or amps on the stage with him. Uh, and Devin Townsend uses the same thing. Dave Mustaine uses pretty much the same thing. And they got a few other little goodies in there too. But that's predominantly what these guys use and guys like them. Um, uh, John Petrucci, I think, still just plays through like two Mesa Boogie heads and, you know, he keeps it simple or whatever. But the thing is, is what was really interesting is like what Mark Holcomb was, uh, and same with Devin Townsend, is there's no tap dancing on foot pedals for them. Uh, everything is digital. So whenever they got to go to a different uh, preset or sound or like say clean channel, dirty channel, it all, it's all automatic. Like, I don't know. Now, mind you, you'd have to play a pretty tight show to be able to pull that off. Exactly how it's pulled off, I have to do a little more research. But the idea that they don't, like, there's no, there's no, like, stepping on any stomp boxes. And when you look at their rig, it's for the complication of, a, like, a big show that they do. It's extremely, extremely simplified. Now, a guy like me doesn't need that kind of sophistication. But, you you know, basically, I'm doing a very extremely cheap version of what they're doing. I've got basically my amp modeler, an effects pedal, and then I've got a cheap amp. And the amp basically runs right through the cabinet. The speaker in there is bypassed it while it's hooked up to that, right? But... The problem is, is that only gets me so far. You'd be surprised that that $116 amp or whatever it was new, uh, 15 watts piped through this mess of boogie thing uh, with this piped into that and the guitar just plugged into that. You'd be surprised the sound that comes out of that. Like I know the videos don't do, they do it justice uh, and it, how loud it is. Now, is it like, okay, I can cut through a drummer's cymbals loud? No, it's probably not quite that loud, but is it loud enough that you could play a, an average size bar with just this? Less than a hundred bucks for that and about a hundred bucks for that. Now, mind you, that was about 1500 bucks back in the nineties. A, a new Mesa Boogie cap, four by 12 cap now in Canadian dollars, about 2000 something. Uh, but you might not need that. You know what I mean? You might not need that stuff anymore. And a lot of guys are downsizing their rigs just so they can carry them in a, in a bag. You know what I mean? Like a couple of cables, some sort of a fax processor and some sort of a, either power amp or straight to the, straight to the PA. Now I've tried pedals straight to the PA before that doesn't really do the job. It sounds very artificial. Uh, you don't have the punch. You don't have the clarity. You don't have the gain. It doesn't move your pant legs like this thing. This thing parts your hair, and moves your pant legs, and shakes the painting off the walls. Uh, so it doesn't do that, right? So sometimes you don't need it to do that. But when you want it to do that, it's nice to have it. So a lot of guys, what they're doing is a 2 by 12 so they can pick, uh, put it in their vehicles, uh, some sort of a pedal, and then some sort of a power amp. And uh, they keep it actually relatively small. The other way is just get a bigger uh you know bigger amp and again to get an amp with all the effects you want on it would be nice because i what i'm trying to get down to is one plug you know like you plug it in once this i can run off of batteries if i want uh, i'm gonna do it for time uh it's probably gonna be a two-part video uh and yeah so it, it but the, the just a really cool idea that you can get you know like um the big three seem to be the axe effects the um what was the other one uh the head rush and the other one is uh a fractal i i haven't looked at those two yet but the, those seem to be what the 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 you know like if you need everything uh the studio musicians use that uh you might not need that much and they're, they're like three grand a piece right so you might not need that much but maybe some sort of a foot switch uh, you know in between like an uh you know like one of the Roland rp8s or whatever something like that that might be more than enough for you and you can run that and then into a head or you can run it into a power amp and the thing about the power amp thing is uh you can get like a like a 170 watt power amp head for like 600 bucks and what that gives you like 170 watts is a lot you know like that that's 47 decibels out the 700 is something like a hundred and 
140 decibels. It's basically a 747 at takeoff. <laughs> That's how loud that is. This thing here, I forget what it peaks out at. Uh, it's like near 100 decibels or something. It, 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 like you could, you could never power this thing enough to get it up to full volume. It just, you, you can't put enough power to it. Maybe with the 700 watts you could, but uh, it, it's just this thing at, at full volume is unbelievably loud uh i've had people stand in front of this and it hurt them <laughs> like like anything like you got to pity the person that this is pointing at uh when, when you crank it right up but the thing is is you never have to crank it that loud to get the good sound you know because it's so full like now mind you i don't have dinky little uh you know uh you know vintage 30s in there i don't really like those that much i mean they're okay you know but uh no there's 90 watts of a speaker in there and mesa boogie made one uh, ev 150s in there and i always uh that was the gray cam i always wanted to try that one i never got a chance to try it uh but this is a lot of headroom in this and and that's what i'm finding too is that uh things that don't have enough headroom yes you get all the gain and the distortion but you get that kind of you don't get the clarity at volume right so it, it when you play through a rig that can fill the room without being maxed out you get such a better such a better sound and, and and one of the things i've always been complimented on live was my my sound set and i can tell you this sound and that sound and like the eight string here that thing i can't wait to play that live because like you sit in front of this thing and it's just like wow <laughs> just with this so my new rig might go digital is what i'm saying so rather than looking for another you know uh, I mean, the only amp that seems